am so excited. Okay, hi, welcome to a reading vlog. I am so stinking excited about this. I've seen like thumbnails of people doing this. I don't think it's like a very big thing right now yet, but I can't remember who did it. If I end up remembering who I saw did this, I'll link it obviously. I went and ordered four mystery books from Etsy and the last one just arrived today. So I really want to open all of these up and see what's popping. So I went online and I ordered four different ones in four different genres from four different shops. Um, I gave them all my Goodreads so they could see what I'd already read, what I was already interested in because I kind of wanted things that maybe I hadn't heard of. Yeah, I haven't even touched these yet. I like, they're still all wrapped. These were all sitting in my living room and I was like dying to rip them open, but I wanted to wait till all of them were here. So how this is going to work is I'm going to open them all up. I'm going to kind of go over like what shops I got them from, what I ordered and what I got. And then I'm going to obviously vlog myself reading them all. And then at the end, I'll kind of go over what I thought. So if you're not interested in the vlog part, this will be time stamped. So you can just watch me open them all if that's interesting to you and then skip to the end to see what I thought. Um, but yeah, I kind of wanted to vlog it just to give more detailed thoughts about maybe why I thought this was picked for me, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and if I think it was like a right fit. I will link all the Etsy stores down below as well where I got the books from. They were all Canadian. They all came from either like Alberta or right around my area. So if you're from the States, there's also a ton like from whatever state you're in and all that kind of stuff. But these were all from like kind of local to me. So the first one I got was a nonfiction from Roman Books. This is the package. Super cute. I've got like the little non-fiction collection and it feels like a hardcover which is kind of nice this one came super super quickly all of these were about in the 15 dollar range but after shipping because <laughs> shipping in canada is like stupid expensive like all four of these cost me about 125 bucks i think all of them were about 30 bucks individually okay. so i asked her for a non-fiction one let's see what i got So I got a coupon code for the next purchase. That's exciting. I got a little bit of black tea. And then I have a note. Dear Dasha, thanks for trusting me with your next read. After taking a peek at your Goodreads TBR, I noticed that you are interested in historical nonfiction. I selected for you a book about France's liberation during World War II. I hope you'll enjoy it. If you liked your experience purchasing from the shop, please consider leaving a review. Thanks for supporting my small business. So we've got the Blood of Free Men, The Liberation of Paris, 1944 by Michael Nyberg. You know what? Honestly, this does seem like something that's up my alley. It's a little, it's a very like specific thing relating to World War II, which I, I always do like, like hyper specific history. Let's see what it says here. In The Blood of Free Men, celebrated historian Michael Nyberg deftly tracks the forces vying for Paris, providing a revealing new look at the city's dramatic and triumphant resistance against the Nazis. Yeah, this definitely seems up my alley. I actually am interested. And I like that it's kind of shorter. It's not like a massive, because a lot of my uh, World War II books are these massive, just chunky boys, and I'm always terrified. But um, once you get past the notes, this book is about 260 pages long, which is perfect. Okay, I'm not too mad about this. So this next one is from Bookish Bundles YYC, if you don't know, that's the Calgary uh, airport code, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and this one I'd ordered a complete mystery genre. I did not specify a genre, the other two I did. This one I decided to go completely off the rails. So this was also hardcover, I think. Okay, so I like how it came all wrapped. We've got a little, oh, is that a magnetic bookmark? Oh my god, I got a little magnetic bookmark. Thank you for your purchase. I hope you enjoy your books. I would love to hear your review and thoughts on what you read. What was something not on your radar, but the themes are present in some books you've read. Hope you enjoy. Okay. I love the little bookmark. That's actually so awesome. I've got some organic chai. And then here we go. We've got the book, fiction, elements of historical fiction, mystery, and biography, hauntingly beautiful, based on true events, immersive reality. I'm definitely not like a historical fiction kind of gal, so I'm hoping that this still does actually fit in with the themes of stuff I've read, like you said. 
Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. Okay, literally never seen this in my life. They said I must die, they said that I stole the breath from men, and now they must steal mine. Charged with the brutal murder of two men, Agnes has been removed to her homeland's furthest reaches to an isolated farm in northern Iceland to wait execution. Horrified at the prospect of housing a convicted murderer, the family on the farm avoids Agnes. Her arrival threatens the peaceful rhythm of their way of life, while her stoic approach to the daily chores is an, an unsettling contrast to the passion that, rumor has it, drove her to kill. Disturbing proof for them of the dangers that can lurk beneath the placid surface. Only Toti, a priest Agnes has mysteriously chosen to be her spiritual, guard, spiritual guardian, seeks to understand her. As the winter months pass and Agnes's death looms closer, the farmer's wife and his daughters learn that there is another side to the sensational tale they've heard, but will their new knowledge be enough to save her? Okay, so this is based on historical events, and it seems to have a bit of a like thriller aspect, which definitely is up my alley for sure. I do love reading thrillers. I, I gotta say, I genuinely don't know what to expect from this one, um, but I am excited to try something new, I will say. Like, I'm a little apprehensive about historical fiction and things like that quite often, but I think that, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and trust this shop. They said it's similar to themes of things I'd already read, so I am hoping that it does fall into that line. Again, also a pretty short one, about 300-ish pages, so that's pretty good too. At least it's not gonna be like a little life length and it's gonna be all like not up my alley, so. Madeline Miller blurbed it and Karen Slaughter, so that's a good, good sign. <laughs> so I also have a bundle here from Books by Tay. I ordered a sci-fi or fantasy from her, so I'm actually really, really excited for this one. Ah! So got a little thank you note. Thank you so much for your order. I hope you enjoy reading this one. I don't know too much about it, but the premise sounded really cool, so I would love to hear what you thought. Stay safe and happy reading. We've got a really cute little bookmark, and we've got some Turtles Hot Chocolate Mix, which is always a winner. I love how she sealed the package up with some wax. That is actually like absolutely beautiful. It seems like such a shame to like... Oh, I should have photographed these before I started. That was stupid. Books by Tay. I think this is a link to a Spotify playlist that has the same mood, if I'm not mistaken, from what I remember from the listing. And there's also a recipe for some peanut butter blossoms. Awesome. And the book is The Black Witch by Lori Forrest. Some echo of her dark power courses through my veins waiting to be released. Definitely haven't heard of this one either. It is a young adult. Eloreen Gardner is the granddaughter of the last prophesized black witch, Carissa Gardner, who drove back the enemy forces and saved the guard of Gardnerian people during the Realm War. But while she is the absolute spitting image of her famous grandmother, Ellarine is utterly devoid of power in a society that prizes magical ability above all else. When she is granted the opportunity to pursue her lifelong dream of becoming an apothecary, Ellarine joins her brothers at the prestigious Verpax University to embrace a destiny of her own, free from the shadow of her grandmother's legacy. But she soon realizes that the university, which admits all manner of people, including a fire-wielding including the fire-wielding winged Icarals, the sworn enemies of all Gardnerians, is a treacherous place for the granddaughter of the Black Witch. Okay, so it's got a school setting. That could be interesting. Yeah, I've genuinely never heard of this one. So actually, well, none of these, I guess. So that's always a good sign, but I definitely don't know what to expect from this one. I've been kind of moving away from YA lately but maybe something that's kind of outside of the norm could be uh, a good pick. Is this the first in a series? No, it looks like a standalone, I think. Okay, so that is number three. That was the fantasy sci-fi. All right, so we've got the last one. This is from Jordaline Reads. Now, if you don't know, she's a booktuber. I absolutely love her because she talks mostly about thriller and horror and she has like the best personality. I'm like obsessed with her and she runs a little Etsy store where she has all sorts of like kind of like more merchy things like mugs and stickers but she also does uh mystery books and that's actually how i got the idea for this because i was watching her channel and she mentioned her store and she offers thriller or horror mystery books so of course um i had to order from her i want to support her anyways because i absolutely love her channel and i'm excited to see what i got honestly she also makes me want to start my own service of like mystery books not gonna lie this stuff is so fun i was looking at it and i was like could I do this? I totally could. It'd be so much fun. I love recommending books to people, like hyper-specific books. And I think that 
I don't know, could be fun. Uh, thank you so much for your order, enjoy the book. We've got a little envelope that says thanks on it. We've got a coffee crisp. Ah, I ripped it. Oh no. Did she include some stickers? Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. I love stickers. It says, with love, Jordaline. Yes, there's two super cute little stickers. I love that. Okay, let's see. I picked, so her option was thriller or horror. Obviously, I've been like super in a horror mood lately. So I wanted some horror. That's what I picked. I've been let down by a lot of the thrillers I've been reading, so I was like, no, let's do something like, I'm in a horror mood, and I, I go to her for most of my recommendations anyways, so again, send her my Goodreads, let's see what she's picked for me, oh, there's two books, work this thing, okay, we've got The Mud Ballad by Joe Cannell, and we've got Slaves to Gravity by Wesley Southard and Somer Cannon. Definitely never heard of these. I think these are both from indie publishers. Yes, Silver Shamrock and Weird Punk Books. Okay, I definitely will admit I don't read enough from independent publishers, so I'm interested about these. That is, that's a cover. Never be alone again. In a dying railroad town, a conjoined twin wallows in purgatory for the murder of his brother. A disgraced surgeon goes to desperate ends to reconnect with his lost love. When redemption comes with a dash of black magic, the two enter a world of talking corpses, flesh-eating hogs, rude mimes, and ritualistic violence. That seems like a lot for like a 120 page book. All right. And then Slaves to Gravity. After waking up in a hospital bed, paralyzed from the waist down, Charlie Snyder had no idea where life would take her. Dejected, broken, and permanently bound to a wheelchair, she believed her life was truly over. That is, until gravity no longer applied. It started out slow, floating from room to room, menial tasks without assistance. When she decided to venture outside and take some real risks with her newfound ability, she rose above her own constraints to reveal a whole new world and found other damaged individuals just like her to confide in. But there are other things out there waiting in the dark. Repulsive, secretive creatures that don't want Charlie to touch the sky, and they'll stop at nothing to keep her on the ground. Okay, that sounds really unique. I have no idea. Again, also a really, really short one. 128 pages. Wow, okay. Oh, there's illustrations. Oh, there's an illustration. There's like a little thing above each chapter. Okay, this is a really interesting mix. I truly have no idea what to expect. I will say the ones I'm probably the most excited for are these two because I love nonfiction. This one sounds just interesting enough to possibly get me more into like literary fiction and um, kind of more like literary thrillers, I guess. I don't know what to expect from these, but I do like that they're short. This one, I gotta say, I'm... It's not like exciting. I was hoping for maybe an adult fantasy, but maybe I should have specified that so that could be on me. I do like that it's something I've never even seen before or heard of. And I'm hoping, based on what I'm seeing, that it is a standalone, which I absolutely do like because I have enough series in my life. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on these bad boys and we'll see what I think. All right, so I'm about 60 pages into the Mud Ballad. I decided to start with this one because it's really, really short, like 125 pages. And it is a weird one, but I think I like it. So you are following two different people. One of these people is a, used to be a conjoined twin until he killed his brother. And the other person is a doctor that kind of follows the circus uh, that this, these twins are a part of and he kind of helps the like circus freaks i don't know if there's a better way to call it um but basically this is the doctor for this group of people at the circus and then you're following them in like the one town when the one brother does kill the other brother and then the story actually starts several years later when the circus has kind of broken apart because there was like an employment act and like ethics act passed so people can't be part of like circus attractions anymore so the doctor's out of a job he returns to the town where he met this brother and the brother ended up staying there the one that's still alive so you're following the two of them kind of reconnecting and going through some interesting things there's little whispers of the occult and there's a very i always like this element of 
is it or isn't it so you're kind of trying to figure out if the brother is like sane or if what he did is actually real i don't want to give away more than that because it's such a short book but it's really interesting so far. I didn't know what to expect from it. The cover definitely put me off, but I'm kind of enjoying this. All right, so now I'm about a hundred pages into the Mud Ballad, and I think I can confidently say this is just not my kind of horror. It's just a lot of gore, and the setting, characters, and what's happening just make it extremely depressing, and I don't think I enjoy that. I like when there's attention and a psychological element and this just does not seem to be hitting those notes obviously there's still some of the book left we'll see how it goes but i'm currently it's not that i'm not enjoying it it's just not my type of book i don't think it's bad i think a lot of horror fans would really really like this like i get the feeling if you enjoyed the parts of american horror story that were a bit more full of tension just depressing this might be for you because there's still that gore element but like if you enjoyed american horror story 1984 like this wouldn't be for you but the only other one i've seen was uh the first one the murder house and um i never finished it i probably should because i enjoyed it but it kind of had this quiet sense of like being depressing and not even tense but just not fun so not for me i think okay I just finished the Mud Ballad and this was extremely forgettable. I don't think it's an issue with the quality of the book because for a short story, it did exactly what it was meant to do. It was actually really, really good in terms of pacing and giving you enough information. I didn't feel like anything was missing from it. I just didn't care for the gore and the bleakness of it all it felt like misery for misery's sake there were some interesting themes of grief and forgiveness was a big one and also like regret um, and like unfinished business sort of but overall i just didn't really connect with it at all i didn't this book made no impression on me and it's kind of disappointing because it feels like, um, I don't know, it doesn't even feel like a book that I would have liked on first glance based on the description, but like I'm willing to give things a shot. Obviously that's the whole point of this, but I felt like this one really wasn't along the lines of what I'd read and enjoyed in terms of horror. Keeping in mind things like The Only Good Indians, uh, The Devil All the Time, if you can call that horror. Uh, Pet Cemetery and The Shining are probably like among my favorite horror books. If you can count Battle Royale as well, I really love that one. Um, Annihilation was like a weird sci-fi horror. I really, really love that. I, I enjoy those kinds of horror rather than pure vile horror like this or like Hell House also made me feel really grossed out kind of like this. So I don't know. Um, This first one was a bit of a disappointment i'm like i'm let down it wasn't like a huge waste of my time because it's such a short book but it sucks because i don't know if it was really picked for me that sounds kind of mean it just doesn't seem like it's hard to tell ahead of time if books are going to be up to someone's taste obviously this one just really was not in my taste at all it's not a bad book i just didn't like it at all <laughs> So I've decided to start Slaves to Gravity. This is by Wesley Southerd and Somer Cannon, and I'm about 30 pages in. So basically you are following a woman who gets into an accident at work. She hits her head and injures her spine and basically she is paralyzed from the waist down. And she thinks that her life is over, um, even though like she has a husband that loves her and has been caring for her, but she's like, I have to use a wheelchair and my life is over because before she used to be super active, used to go hiking and had like a job that required her to like walk around and stuff. And then she discovers she can float, like literally just like levitate from her bed or from her chair and float up and float around the house and stuff. And like that concept in and of itself is not like very scary. I can't see how this is going to turn into a horror necessarily. It just seems... I don't know. I don't know where it could go. Uh, beyond that, it's just kind of a little boring. But my biggest issue so far with this, even only like 30 pages in, and there's only like 100 to go, right? It's like 100... 
25 page novella. My issue with this is the dialogue. Um, people don't talk like this and it's driving me nuts. And like, I understand this is like a independently published book. There's probably different abilities for like editors and different standards for like what they accept and that kind of thing. I'm not saying that in like a bad way, but I'm just like, I don't read a lot of like indie published books. So I'm sure that it's a little bit different from what normal publishers would accept. Um, but it's just the weirdest, I don't know. So it's like, um, I just love you, okay? Don't make it weird, she teased. He laughed and pinched her cheek playfully. She swatted at him and gave his ass a loving pat. He yipped and strutted away comically. No touching the merchandise, lady. It's just like, it reads very Wattpad. Like, that's not the only incident that this was so just so out of the norm of how normal people communicate i think is like why this is so funny to me it's like a black patch was strapped over her left eye and when she walked over to hug doggo she did so with a vicious limp doggo you dumb fuck how are you tanya you used tampon couldn't be better how's the leg tanya sneered never better how's your sex life doggo frowned and floated away with his pizza touche and it's just like I've never heard anyone call someone else a used tampon. Dumb fuck I've heard. Used tampon? Is that necessary? <laughs> Anyways, um, clearly since this is such a short book, I'm just gonna try to rip through it today because I'm already on a roll. I'm just like, I'm not loving it. God, my head looks tiny. I don't know. I'm just like, I'm not that into it i don't see where the horror is really come in there's just been like one instance where they're like just don't go above the cloud line very ambiguous and like she's like oh they're hiding something from me i don't know i'm not that into it so i'm kind of sad that the horror books are turning out to be kind of mediocre <laughs> tell me why this damn book just said you can pick your nose but you can't pick your family Y'all, I just finished this fucking book and um, what was this? What was this? Okay, first of all, to me, this is like not horror. There are like kind of horror elements, but it's definitely more speculative fiction, 100%. Even the kind of like thrillery tense aspects of this were just not that, um, scary i don't know nothing about this really gave horror it definitely gave like speculative fiction um kind of like sci-fi almost like superhero x-men elements um this is a one star for me i just didn't think it was good i did not like it i would perhaps recommend it still can i say that can I say that if I give it a one star? I would like maybe recommend it if you know going into it that it is more speculative than anything and that if you're like a fan of X-Men or something, this could be a good like speculative horror fiction um, or speculative fiction with horror elements rather because again, not really horror. But I think in terms of like the two horror books that I ordered, like these were both kind of flops. The Mud Ballad was a lot better but this was just not it at all. I didn't like this at all. So I'm kind of disappointed. We're like not doing great. Um, I guess the Mud Ballad, like there's nothing wrong with it. It just really wasn't for me. This one is just, I think like not that good period. Like, yeah, one star. It's not great. Like I kind of was like, highlighting earlier there's some really really weird dialogue stuff and that continues throughout um the pacing is like okay but the logic is like non-existent there's just so mud ballad was also about as short but mud ballad had exceptional world building that was very subtle whereas this book was all tell no show 
and it just was not very enjoyable to have everything spoon fed to you and then yeah there was those weird lines where like the authors I guess they were trying to be funny but it just came off as extremely out of place and I feel like with this concept of someone having this um I don't know, I guess this concept of someone having this accident and they have this disability could have been turned into a metaphor because horror often is all about metaphors, right? It's always about real human fears and feelings turned into some horrific element that come, like brings it to life. And while I could see that it started off that way, it sure as shit did not finish that way. And I'm just, I'm lost. I don't know what the goal was. I don't... I'm big sad. I'm big sad that both the horror books were just not it. I was really hoping to find like a new horror favorite. I think of all the genres that I picked out, I was the most excited for horror, especially because they're both from Jordaline. And I watch her on YouTube and I know she has like, she loves reading horror and she reads a ton of it. So I was just expecting something I don't know more i'm glad i got two different books i got to try a couple different things and i can definitely add that to like my experience as a horror reader since it's still like a new thing for me sort of but it's just definitely not my just not my thing i think when i think about i think when i think about the kind of horror i like i do really prefer this kind of psychological or this bit more um almost like i don't even want to say literary because i was going to say that maybe you could consider like the devil all the time like almost literary or like a like gothic horror but i don't even it's not even that i just don't know how i feel about overly gory or like speculative which is what these books were because when i think about my favorite horror books they're either super psychological and heady or they really carry through these like strong strong themes and that's not what i got from these books um the mud ballad i guess had some thematic content like guilt and like hopelessness but like it just wasn't strong enough to carry the book and this had from what i could tell absolutely fuck all so i'm big let down honestly like this makes me not want to continue with this project but obviously like i want to like I've, i paid money for these books i'm gonna read them but it's just like really discouraging <laughs> Hi friends, um, for you guys it's not that much later, but for me it's been like <laughs> two months <laughs> since I read any books for this video, but I thought I'd get back into it. I had a bit of a plane ride, so I thought I'd start reading Burial Rites. Um, this is, as I mentioned, this is the story of a woman who was uh, accused and convicted of murder before her death sentence. She is sent off to live with like a farm family and she requests a different spiritual like counselor like she requests a priest like an assistant priest who's not even sure like why he got chosen for this so the beginning is really just setting this up because i'm like 70 pages in and she's just kind of getting used to the farm like it's for such a short book it's really really slow it's beautifully written um i'm I'm still not seeing why this was picked for me, like why the themes are something that I would enjoy necessarily, but I'm curious to see where it goes because like I said, like the writing's really beautiful, so I'm not hating this. It's pretty short and I am kind of intrigued to see why she's acting the way that she is, why she feels the way that she does because you find out that one of the two men that were murdered by the group of three people that were convicted, one of the men was someone that she was in love with so now i'm wondering is this like did she take the fall for someone was she falsely accused and just went with it because no one would believe her like i'm really not sure how to think this is definitely different than things i would normally read and i guess that was kind of the point uh, of picking that like random genre um i mean i was kind of hoping that they would see like what i normally read and pick something along those lines but um yeah i'm curious to see how this goes i'm not hating it but it's definitely not like the most incredible thing i've ever read but i'm already liking it so much more than the horror books so yeah i'll um keep you posted see if it improves or gets worse who knows
so I'm about just past 200 pages into burial rites and I was like chatting to myself and then I was like I'm vlogging I should probably just say this out loud to the camera um this is taking me a little unaware there was one specific moment in this book and I'm not gonna really call it a spoiler I'm not really gonna go into huge detail but essentially uh, Agnes, our main character, is talking about her life and she mentions that the way that she was perceived in the village she was in um, when a man, a certain man with a perhaps less than savory reputation started taking interest in her was like she was the one that was losing friends, she was viewed as other and it just hit me how much this book has the very surface level gender norms and expectations but there's also another layer to it that's simmering just underneath and how friggin fascinating it is this book has some really i feel like you could dig into this a lot the reason i say there's like two layers to this is because on the first layer, like this is what is it like 19th century iceland um not exactly a hospitable place not exactly a liberal uh free country uh, and so women have very much just uh, traditional gender roles everyone kind of works on a farm um women are expected to be child bearers all that kind of stuff right and obviously there is some inkling of that but if you look underneath the way that the main character is treated and she's always called the murderess and she's seen as this other and it just reminded me of when I read, I believe it was Our Prisons Obsolete by Angela Davis, which is a book that just friggin' sticks with me, first of all. But um, it was talking about how women who committed crimes used to be seen as other, used to be seen as against the laws of nature because it was in men's nature to commit crime, but women were not supposed to act that way. So the women who acted that way were not just branded as criminals, but they were branded as ungodly, as criminally insane, as just plain insane, because that's not how women were supposed to act. And that's what this book just finally, like it hit me that that's what this reminds me of, is like, as a woman, you were expected to act a certain way and anything that went against that was already just a big no-no, but if you commit a crime, you are not seen as human any longer. You are a servant of the devil, essentially. And then when this family that she has to stay at starts to get to know her, they realize that there's a human underneath and not everyone in the family accepts her, absolutely not. But there are these moments where the humanity kind of shines through from the family. And it's just, it kind of all ties back to that for me is like this expectation of uh, women's behavior and how closely it was tied to these, not just religious ideals, but just these bunk scientific expectations of like a woman and their mental health and how they were supposed to act and how their brain chemistry was and how it was unnatural for women to commit crime even though men it was fine it happened they're just you know they're just a different class the criminals but like she wasn't a murderer for doing the murder she's a murderess like it's different it carries a heavier weight almost if you guys know me like, I don't often read books that are explicitly feminist. It's not something that I care to, like, research into in my reading, at least. Personally, I find a lot of the books I read, sometimes it creeps into it, for sure. Um, one of my favorite, well, my favorite book of all time is Circe by Madeline Miller, which has a shit ton of feminist themes. It's just, like, it's not something I seek out. Which, first of all, um, if you're a fan of Circe, you should absolutely check this out if you're okay with historical fiction. But beyond that... It's just, the more I notice these little things, the more books I find about this, it's just absolutely fascinating how perception of gender changes. I think it really kickstarted when I did read Our Prisons Obsolete because that discussion about women's criminality and how they were treated is friggin' fascinating, completely depressing, but really fascinating. And I'm just realizing how it's leaked into a lot of other aspects. I heard about a book recently that I really wanna read and I know this is not the only time this has happened, this is just like the book I heard um, of a woman who was committed to a psychiatric hospital because she had too much free will, she was too hard-headed, too strong. Um, and there's a long history of people doing this. Well, people, there's a long history of men 
committing women who were not womanly and were not i'm a little bit sick i'm so sorry of, <laughs> there's a long history of men committing women who did not act like what they thought women should act like who maybe were a little bit too stubborn were a little bit too strong spirited and they were deemed like insane legally insane because they were not acting like women were supposed to so i just find it like really interesting how that is just simmering underneath in the subtext of the book it's not overt you really have to look for it which just makes this all the more rewarding when i finally it like it clicked for me when she was talking about how the village treated her because she was getting attention from a man who was perhaps not the most respected and how that reflected on her and it's just the most i don't know it's just absolutely fascinating to see because the other thing too is this is based on a true story obviously kind of like with a lot of historical fiction it's the author kind of plugging in subtext and stuff and just figuring out you know filling in the lines for someone's life and story but i absolutely think it's just like the most interesting thing to spot it in books knowing this like back knowledge that i have about the treatment of women and, and uh, female criminals and female psychiatric patients and god damn that's a topic i would love to like delve into because i think that stuff is absolutely infuriating but really freaking interesting so yeah i just thought i'd kind of chit chat about that because i thought that was a really interesting thing to discover and like i said if you're a fan of cersei if you like those kind of very complex female characters i think this could really really work for you um in terms of the actual novel in itself it's like it's still not the most amazing thing i've ever read i'm not like absolutely hooked and have to keep reading it it's a very very slow moving very atmospheric you're very much stuck in this like dark dreary um cold iceland and you're on the farm and you get a lot of details about the farm which is like not the most interesting but Fair enough, that's kind of the point, but I, I can already see I've rambled on for eight minutes about this. Anyways, um, yes, I'm gonna keep reading. I will let you know, I think next time I update will be when I finish it, because I can't imagine there's gonna be much more, but we'll see. All right, wow, um, I have finished Burial Rites, finally, and it is a very sad, beautiful black hole of a book. I was I was kind of tearing up towards the end almost because while it's not explicit, it's not it's not violent or gory in any way, it's just touching because somehow in such a short amount of time you really come to feel for Agnes and you get to know the people around her. It's kind of interesting because it seems like only towards the end like it was only in the last 40 pages, 50 pages that you got the full story of what happened the night that the murder was committed, the murder in question that Agnes is being um, executed for. So you kind of go the whole time without really knowing anything beyond the bare bones, the bare kind of, I guess, legal facts of the case, um, the, the, the murder and the arson and who was involved. But you don't really know what happens. You don't know the emotions involved. You don't know the the atmosphere, the tension, the setting, and it made a world of difference. And I feel like part of me wishes that we'd gotten it sooner because we got to know some of the other people involved. We got to know the victim and you got to know the people involved in the murder a little bit better through the story that she told because obviously it was not just the murder. She was trying to tell what happened leading up to it so that someone could hear her story. And it's just a very, it makes you feel these very conflicting emotions and it's just a very stark reminder that nothing is as black and white as we think it is and the family that she is staying with has come to see that over time and not everyone in the family has warmed up to her at the same capacity but they all saw her humanity which is just really really touching and i think that's one of the big things of this book i don't know how to feel 100 percent. i feel like this is a book i'm gonna have to like sit and marinate in for a little bit the writing is like just spectacular absolutely beautiful writing just absolutely breathtaking i've not purple prose it's not overwritten by any means it's just very touch it's very haunting that's the best way i can put it um I think if you like Cersei and you are looking for a more historically based novel, this might be up your alley. It's got that very complex female character at its core. It's got the, the misunderstood complex female character 
Um, it's got a very morally gray female character. It's got all sorts of very dark, twisty themes. The setting is beautiful in theory, but also very cruel. And there's just like the writing again, absolutely spectacular. Um, it's not something I would have ever picked up on my own. I can't definitively say it's something that I like, but I'm kind of grateful for the experience of reading it, if that makes sense. Like it was out of my comfort zone for sure. And it ended up being an absolutely beautiful book. So it's not like I lost my time reading this at all. I think it's, it's a book that I would actually really, really recommend to people. I think it's definitely unique. I've never read anything like this, but it's a very slow, deliberate, haunting book. And I think it accomplishes a lot for such a slow, creeping, quiet story. I think there's a lot packed into it. Um, and yeah, I would actually like really recommend this. I think I'm gonna end up giving it about like three, 3.5 stars. I, it's just like, it's not my cup of tea in terms of enjoyment. It's not the highest, I, like I can't give it much higher than that, but I think this has a lot of qualities and I think a lot of people could really, really love this. Hey, so I'm about to start The Black Witch, um, but I just thought I'd come on here because I thought it was so fucking funny. So I looked this book up on Goodreads and I came across like some people talking about how like despite the controversy and this and that and I was like controversy like I feel like I would have heard about this I know the book is a little bit older but like I feel like I would have heard about this because I went through some older booktube videos when I just got into booktube so anyways I looked it up apparently the early um reviews called this book like fantastic it was great everyone was loving it and then a bookstore employee and a blogger who got an arc wrote this almost 9,000 word review calling this the most dangerous offensive book I have ever read and quotes <laughs> and quotes a few things from the book. Now for context, I guess there are several different fantasy races within this world and our main character belongs to what is considered like the purest, they're very elitist, they see every other race than them as dirty. So of course there's like, uh, there's a quote, it's like, the Celts are not a pure race like us. They're more accepting of intermarriage and because of this, they're hopelessly mixed. And this person's going on about how fucking disgusting this is. It's racist, ableist, yada, yada, yada. But the problem is from what I'm gathering, the whole point of the book is that this character is brought up in this world, but she doesn't like, she, she unlearns it because she realizes that that's fucking disgusting to think like that. But of course, um, the YA bookish sphere, as I've come to learn, is real quick on jumping on authors and saying that whatever you put in your book means you believe it. For a community of readers, there's very little critical thinking skills. It's astounding. Anyways, I just thought that was funny because I did not know that there was controversy with this book. I thought this was like a lesser known book that no one's read or is like just another generic YA book and turns out there's controversy. So that's always fun. Um, I'm gonna start it. I don't have very high hopes. I've been like looking at it and I really kind of don't want to read it. The only thing that's saving me is knowing that it's YA so it'll probably be a pretty quick read because it's not particularly dense. But I kind of have very, I don't know, from what I've read with regards to like the controversy and from the reviews and the synopsis, it seems extremely generic YA. So like, I'm not super pumped for it, but let's see what I think. Ah yes, the quintessential. I'm dressed in shapeless clothing with no makeup and I've got a messy bun and I'm not pretty like my female family member. Good fucking Lord. I'm officially giving this up. Um, I read 54 pages. I gave it 50 pages at least. This is just not for me at all. There's some YA that does not read like YA in the sense that it is not juvenile hand-holding. It, it translates across all ages and it's easy enough to read for anyone. But this feels like it is written for 12 to 14 year old girls and I am not the target demographic and I feel like it would be unfair of me to finish this book and give it a one star because it is that bland and boring and mind-numbing. Um, 
hand holding i can't do it there's absolutely nothing in this world that intrigues me i can you can just tell where everything's going uh with this world like i mentioned being separated by like fantasy races and the girl is part of the one race that thinks they're above all others and they use their previous oppression as an excuse for oppressing everyone else instead you can just tell that she's going to become the one the chosen one that is going to put an end to all that and there's probably going to be a war and she's probably going to make it so that all fantasy races can live together in harmony after and i'm just not i'm just not fucking interested i'm sorry i have absolutely no patience for this i really thought i'd be able to stick it through for the vlog but as soon as the first chapter concluded i could tell this was going to be the most generic young adult fantasy that everyone makes tiktoks like laughing about this is literally that and i can't i can't do it i value my time i value <laughs> my energy this is going immediately in an unhaul pile because i just straight up can't do this i can't do this it's not happening um as to why it was picked for me i'm not sure other than it's a fantasy there's absolutely nothing in this that is like anything i enjoy it's young adult which i tend to not enjoy it's got the kind of very basic tropes i'm shocked to be honest that robin hobb blurbed it on the back saying that it's a refreshing powerful young adult fantasy offers an uncompromising glimpse of world-altering politics amplified by magical setting in which prejudice and discrimination cut both ways. I don't, I don't know. I can't do this. So this is, this is officially a DNF, which means we only have one book left to go, which is the nonfiction, which I also am not super hyped for. Honestly, the ones that I was excited for or more excited for, I read already in this project. So if this is any indication, this project's gonna end a lot sooner than I thought, to be quite honest with you. Um, I'm sorely disappointed so far but maybe the last book can save it who knows hi friends so we have come to the conclusion of the vlog if you've been watching the whole way through and not using the timestamps you might notice that i completely skipped a book if you use the timestamps you might be wondering why i look so friggin disappointed uh all will be explained because i have to end this vlog i am in misery <laughs> So to recap, we have got ourselves a historical fiction, we've got a non-fiction, a young adult fantasy, and two horror books that I got sent completely randomly. I have started four out of the five, I have completed three out of the five, and I refuse to even read one of them because it's just been a lesson in disappointment. <laughs> so I started by reading both of these. These were both sent to me by the same shop. These are two horror books and I gave this one 2.5 stars, two stars. This one got a 1.5 star for me. These did not work for me super well, mainly because uh, the Mud Ballad was just extremely depressing to the point where it didn't even feel horrific anymore. It was just a lot of despair and it wasn't really enjoyable to read from. I prefer maybe something a little more horrific than just plain gloom. So that didn't work for me for that reason. This one didn't work for me because it seemed like it was, I think the advertisement was supposed to be horror, but this was more of like a sci-fi fantasy horror. It took a really weird turn that just did not make any kind of sense. And ultimately, based on the other things that I had read, I'm surprised that such a fantasy horror was sent to me and kind of same for this one most of the horror that i enjoy is a little bit more thematic i guess so these two didn't work for me and i'm not really sure why they were sent specifically to me just based on my tastes in other books of the genres when it comes to horror like i said i enjoy thematic horror so i enjoy like pet cemetery that deals very heavily with grief um, I really enjoyed The Only Good Indians, which dealt with a lot of cultural things, but also a lot of uh, guilt and all those kind of very natural feelings that was transformed through horror. And even though it had a supernatural element, it was really much more heavily focused on the characters and like the embodiment of their feelings. So neither of these really fell into the types of horror that I enjoy, and that's why they didn't really work for me. I would maybe recommend them because they're short, but as long as you know going into them that this one's just plain depressing and this one takes some really weird turns and definitely falls more into the fantasy category almost. I did not find there was much in this that was horrific. Next, I had read Burial Rites. This was the one of the books that was sent to me that I have 
definitely never heard of and it wasn't even on my radar because I picked a random genre for this and the person that sent it to me said that they picked it because it had themes similar to things I had enjoyed. This is a historical fiction set in uh, Iceland. No, yes, Iceland. And it was about a woman who was accused of murder and she was awaiting execution. And this one ended up being somewhat successful. I gave it a three star because it still wasn't my thing, but there was some more interesting themes in this and I didn't hate it. I could actually see the thought process behind this being, I could actually see the thought process behind this one being chosen for me because there was a lot of good thematic content packed in here. The synopsis definitely made it sound more thriller-like. I was watching back my footage from the beginning of the vlog and I mentioned that it sounds like a thriller. It's definitely not. There is a slight mystery to it because you're trying to figure out what happened. They're just not telling you. It's not like there's some big mystery or a crazy plot twist. It's nothing like that, but it was still a very creeping and slow and haunting novel that I, I quite enjoyed for what it was. This was probably the most successful, not probably, this was the most successful of the bunch. I didn't hate this book. I had no ill will towards it and I would actually recommend this to a lot of people. It was quite decent and I could see why this one was actually somewhat catered to me in the selection. The next book I had attempted was The Black Witch by Laurie Forrest. This is a young adult fantasy I had picked in the fantasy category and like I said at the beginning of the vlog, I should have probably specified that I was looking for adult fantasy because this is not for me. As I mentioned, this is not for my age range at all. I'm not the intended audience. And while some young adult has that crossover appeal, uh, I'm specifically thinking off the top of my head of Ray Bearer, which was just so beautiful to read. It was unlike a typical young adult fantasy, which is just much more, I don't know, uh, derivative and direct. Ray Bearer was much more fairy tale esque The writing was just such a beautiful part of it. And it felt much more appealing to read than a just extremely stereotypical young adult fantasy that had absolutely no appeal to me. Yes, I guess if you go on my Goodreads, I had read a lot of a young adult fantasy, but overall they're not rated nearly as highly as I rate a lot of adult fantasies because I tend to just enjoy them more. There's more complexities. I could tell within 50 pages of this that there was absolutely no depth to this. It was written for young adult readers and that's okay. They need their hand held a little bit, but for me to sit through all of this, is just not worth it and because it's a series like first book in a series i especially didn't want to waste my time i'm not sure why this was um picked for me and i said at the beginning of the vlog too that i was kind of feeling like the least excited for this one because again i have been moving away from young adult fantasy and this just proved why to me it takes something really special for me in young adult for me to get excited again it takes something unique and the writing has to be spectacular because the this kind of hand holding show don't um tell don't show works best for younger readers but i'm at a point where i don't need to be shown and told everything i can make inferences for myself i can connect the dots i can see those gray areas of morality whereas young readers cannot so uh if you do have a 14 year old in your life that is looking for a, a fantasy this could be it but this is just not not at all meant for me and i'm frankly kind of disappointed i was really hoping for maybe a new fantasy that i hadn't heard of that i would love but this didn't work and then the book that i decided i'm not even gonna bother reading and this kind of sucks because i feel like i should have tried it for the sake of the vlog but um there, there's just a lot of reasons so when i was watching back the opening of the books and the beginning of the vlog to edit and to kind of just refresh my memory based on what I said. I said I was most excited for this because I've been loving nonfiction lately. And while that is true, when I had ordered these books, it was like May, June. That's how long this has been happening. Um, this has been like months in the making. Um, when I ordered this, it was May, June, and I had started reading a lot more nonfiction. I was enjoying it, and I do still love, obviously, historical nonfiction. I have absolutely nothing against it. I find I know my taste for um, nonfiction a little bit better now. I'm not just interested in picking up everything and anything that has to do with a certain time period or event. Namely, I don't just want to read any book on World War II. I look for those that have really good reviews or an interesting focus or spin. I might have to purge some of the ones on my shelf. And that's what kind of helps me make the decision that I don't even want to read this is knowing that with all the other nonfiction that I'm really interested in, the kind of generic World War II things just aren't cutting it for me as much. I have absolutely like just sitting here looking at it. I've absolutely 
zero desire to ever read this book in my life. Even if I run out of nonfiction on my current TBR, this would still never be at the top because I just don't care. I, uh, I'm just gonna say it, I don't care. And that's why this choice also kind of frustrated me because when I got the package, it said that, well, I looked through your Goodreads and you had a lot of history books. I'm like, yes, that's true. There was a few World War II books on my to be read shelf, but I had not read them and enjoyed them. I feel like a more accurate depiction of what I would enjoy would be my red shelf and my favorites and what kind of nonfiction I tend to actually read and enjoy. And this, there's no books like this on there. Maybe Blitz, but that's a stretch because it's World War II, but it's more focused on a very niche history thing. So based on that and a lot of these other books, um, I'm gonna say that I think most of these were not chosen for me. I, and that sounds so freaking harsh, but I'm, I'm really disappointed. It seems like these were all books. I, I don't know how, I think most of the shops pick up used books um, to sell, which is great. I, I mean, I don't expect for $15 to get like a brand new hardcover. So uh, I'm under the impression that most of these are used books that are being, you know, picked up and flipped, which is fine. You're paying for a curation service as well, right? You're not paying to go to Value Village yourself and find a book for $5. You're paying for someone to pick it for you. But if we're going off that and I paid for a curation service, these were not curated. Only this one was somewhat curated and it's extremely frustrating. Um, so maybe I need to pull, maybe I need to pull books in Lala and actually pay someone explicitly for curation. Uh, whereas that's what I thought this was gonna be, but to me it seems like someone went to Value Village, went into the young adult fantasy section and pulled one out and then went to the nonfiction section and pulled one out. I don't know, I'm, um, I'm like frustrated. I had really high hopes for this vlog. So I'm thinking there might have to be a part two and I might have to maybe compare it to books that I would suggest myself based off my Goodreads or maybe actually pay someone uh, for a curation service. I know that Chapters, which is our main chain bookstore here in Canada, they do a, uh, a curation service. I don't think it's paid, but I think it takes a little bit of time and you have to like email back and forth with them. Um, and like I said, Books and Lala has made videos with actual like paid curation services that recommend books to you specifically. So maybe that's what I need to do. Maybe I need to find shops that are more specific and it's not just by genre and you link your Goodreads. Hey, maybe I had to be more specific in what I was looking for. I thought maybe just putting um, I thought between my Goodreads and the genre, it might be sufficient to find something. So maybe I need to do the opposite. Maybe I need to have people send me their Goodreads and a genre and me pick a book for them. I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I made it too difficult. Maybe this just also was a fluke and it wasn't crazy successful. I say that because this was somewhat interesting, even though this was not remotely what I normally read. It still kind of worked. I don't know. I have a lot of um, conflicting feelings, so I apologize sincerely if this vlog was a bit of a, like a flop for you to watch because it kind of went so downhill. <laughs> I mean, it started downhill, so I don't know if it could go more downhill. I don't know, I just, I, I expected so much more. I thought between four different shops, there's bound to be something I love and there just wasn't. And it was just the weirdest reading experience. It took me six months to read three freaking books, like, Something's not adding up. <laughs> so that was it for this vlog. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. Um, I would still check out the shops and uh, you know, I'll leave everything below like I said and I would still recommend you maybe check them out or try this kind of thing for yourself. I'm sure for some people it could be really successful. Maybe I'm too picky, maybe I wasn't specific enough. I don't think this is um, a reflection on any of these people's shops. It's just my personal feelings towards the books. I have no hard feelings. Uh, it's just, it was disappointing because I was really, really excited. Um, I think the idea is really fun. Your mileage may vary, I guess. Thank you for watching. So my social media will be linked down below with these shops. You guys can reach out to me there. You guys can also comment. Let me know if you've read some of these or if you had any experiences with ordering mystery books online. I'd be very curious to hear it. And other than that, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it so, so much. And I'll see you next time. Bye.